रामाय राम भद्राय राम चंद्राय वेद से रघुनाथाय नाथाय सीताय फतेह नम किशकिंद कांड चैप्टर नंबर थ्री द मीटिंग बिटवीन रामा एंड हनुमान If possible, after listening to this chapter, please offer fruits or some sweets for, to the deities. And by the way, unless we read this chapter, we can never understand Sundara Kant completely. The recitation begins now. Hanuman, who was in the deepest councils of Sukriva, leapt lightly from Mount Rishimukha and assumed the guise of a sannyasi who was better suited to throw the enemy off his guard. And it was but a child's play to him. He approached the princes and bent low before them. Next, he began to inquire about their antecedents and laud their divine nature. in words of bewitching melody and profoundly suggestive having reverenced them with heart overflowing with devotion he proceeded to address them gently your valor is ever sure and fruitful your form and features are most noble and charming hence more like gods and kingly sages do you both look i guess you observe very severe fasts vows and penances Hence, I might rightly take you for hermits, the creatures of this forest, quick in affright at the sight of you. I notice that you cast keen and searching glances through the trees that line the shores of Lake Pampa. How come you are here in this no man's land? Yon Pampa reflects your dazzling splendor. The sheen of your bodies ripples like a sea of gold. You breathe hard with the fatigue and exertion of a long walk through these rough woods, O oh, mighty armed. The beasts and the birds of this forest have never seen the like of you, and it is no wonder that they flee in terror. Your looks are majestic and noble, like those of a lordly lion, but a lion is nowhere by your side in courage and strength. The bows you so lightly wield resemble more like huge rainbows in the sky. Your prowess falls like an axe at the root of your enemy's clan. The blinding luster of your forms irradiates the quarters of peerless beauty. You assume the lovely and proud gait of lordly bulls. Of boundless spiritual radiance, your stout arms and strong reach below your knees like the trunks of elephants. Who be ye, lords of men? This Mount Rishimukha swims in an ocean of glory reflected from your body, fitted to wield the scepters of mighty empires, rivaling the very gods in prowess and valor. What led you here? Large are your eyes and lovely as the petals of the red lotus. Redoubtable heroes as you are, why the matted locks of a hermit? Are ye twins that you are so alike? More like the lords of day and night are ye that have descended from the spheres on high to visit this dull, dark speck of earth, blessed with every mark of high royalty. Your place is on lofty thrones. Then why this lowly hermit garb? Why this rough forest life? A glance at your broad chests, leonine shoulders, lordly gait of mad bulls or elephants, and long stout arms, hard like bars of adamant, fill me with doubts as to why your limbs are not adorned with priceless ornaments as they deserve. This entire universe might safely rest under the shadow of your arms, even as the lordly Vindhyas or the Meru keep watch and ward over the earth. Your bows are most beautifully fashioned; the like have never been seen on this earth. Curious pastes adorn them, while golden bands give them the appearance of the dread Vajra of Indra. Like mighty serpents incensed, or the terrible rod of time, sharp arrows fill your quivers. Your swords are long, broad, and chased with gold, like lordly serpents that have just thrown off the slough. What? Silent yet? It matters not. I will proceed. Well, there lives hereabouts Sugriva, a king of the monkeys, a mighty hero. 
he roams about these wilds deprived of his rights by his brother. The noble one has sent me to you. Hanuman am I named, the son of Vayu. I am the chief counselor of the king and have obeyed his orders in coming down here from Mount Rishimukha in the guise of a sannyasi. Yet I can take any form at will and go wherever I desire. Thus did Hanuman, the most skillful of speakers, proclaim his errand and wait in respectful silence to hear their reply. Rama's face shone with delight as he spoke to his brother. Dear boy, this is the Prime Minister of Sugriva, the Noble One. He is searching for us who are after Sugriva. I take it that his master himself has come to us through the medium of his servant. You know full well that the king should not hold direct converse with the messengers. It is a rule of kingly polity. So let your affection towards me and Sugriva urge you on to render meet reply and sweet to this wise one. Hanuman has mastered the innermost secrets of Rigveda, else he speaks not so. He has steeped himself in the mysteries of Yajurveda, else he speaks not so. The Samaveda has no veils for him, else he speaks not so. Every variety of the science of language has been thoroughly studied by him over and over. He has spoken much, yet I could not find in it the slightest flaw. The face, the eyes, the forehead, the brows and the other limbs are faultlessly consonant and harmonious. Nor too diffuse, nor diffident, nor halting, nor hurried. The sentences spring from the chest, sound in the throat and are spoken in the pitch of Pa, which is Madhyama. His delivery is neither too slow nor too fast, faultless, charming, auspicious and scientific. His words are pronounced with wondrous beauty, proceeding as they do from the chest, throat and head in accordance with the Uddata, Anudata and the Svarita notes. The deadliest foe rushing upon him with sword uplifted will forget his wrath and come under the spell of his influence. How can a king accomplish his ends unless he is fortunate in having such an envoy? Such gifted servants bring success to him whom they serve. Then Lakshmana, the wise and prudent, replied to Hanuman, We are well conversant with the noble traits of Sagriva and do but seek him in these regions. O wise one, we are ready to carry out any line of action that you have been instructed by a master to suggest. Marathi was overjoyed to hear these words of deep import. He concluded that Vali was already vanquished and desired to bring about an undying friendship between Sugriva and Rama and Lakshman. Mangalam Kushledraya Mahaniya Gunabdi Chakravarti Dhanurjaya Sarvabhomaya Mangalam